Hey, what's up? So I had an idea for this video. I think it's really important about a Christian in the workplace, just practical advice, spiritual advice for anyone who's in any type of job. Because, uh, you know, I made a video about how to start a business, how I started a business out of the back of my car, landscaping business and these types of things. And that applies to many different businesses. But uh, a lot of people are never going to start a business. They don't want to. They don't. It's not something that they're, they're going to do. And so a lot of people work jobs. Well, I have plenty of experience doing that as well. Um, I'll tell you some of that experience where I've worked plenty of jobs for many years. I have a lot of experiences as a lost person and as a Christian, both. And so I could talk about some of the mistakes, some of the successes uh, of things going well, uh, things to avoid, things that would really help you in your job, uh, both practically, also spiritually, as a testimony, all those different types of things. Uh, there's quite a bit to talk about so I think this would be a really valuable video and uh, I hope to be a blessing to you um, you know because um, it's many years uh, of experience and hopefully maybe someone that's uh, younger could could take a hold of some of these things and prevent some headache and uh, some stress and anxiety and, and some uh, going in a bad direction and also maybe anyone else even if you're older Maybe there's some things that you need to uh, brush up on or you haven't you haven't thought of and uh, to strengthen. So uh, I, I, there's a lot to talk about. So having said all that, let me go back to the beginning and tell you some of the my experience, and then I'll get into some of the things that we should uh, that some uh, practical advice. Okay. So going all the way back to the beginning, I started working probably when I was about 13 years old doing demolition work, these types of things. And I was a 14, I got a job at a hardware store. And I worked a couple of different hardware stores for a while. And uh, then I did some car detailing. And then after that, landscaping. And I did that for the longest of any job I've ever had, uh, landscaping for over 10 years. And then after that, I started landscaping business. And I did that for a couple of years. Um, and also in between there, uh, I've been an assistant manager of a pizza shop. I've also got my license to sell life insurance. I did that for a little bit with sales. Um, I also uh, did digital marketing for a while, uh, search engine optimization, Google, pay per click, uh, Facebook ads, building a website, uh, doing a blog, um, what's it called, affiliate marketing, these types of things. So I've done a pretty wide variety of things, both physical labor and sort of white collar desk job type of, of work. Um, mostly blue collar type of stuff. I never went to college and the reason is I, you know, when I was lost, my primary focus was, it was first it was going to be an actor but then to uh, do music. So my whole life was being in, in bands and trying to make, you know, a great record that we could tour around the country, around the world with, maybe get signed to a, to a record label to facilitate that. And that was everything. I put everything I had into that. And so by the time I got saved, that was all I cared about. And then um, I just kind of stuck with landscaping and you know made mistakes along the way. But I went from you know no college degree, physical labor, and then later on educating myself teaching skills and then flipped to being a business owner and went way up that way so that's pretty much a, a quick overview of work history uh, so I've done quite a few things I've been around a lot of different people also environments about uh, where too because this this is important as far as culture uh, so I've worked in smaller towns I've worked in some of the wealthiest neighborhoods in Massachusetts and uh, New Hampshire especially. I have also worked in inner cities, in the Twin Cities, um, in Twin Cities, Minnesota, and um, yeah, so like I said, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Minnesota, and so a bunch of different places and different environments with a wide variety of coworkers, different types of bosses and managers, supervisors, a wide variety of uh, oh I almost forgot the other big thing too was <laughs> uh, more things I forgot I've done for work is professional moving that was another huge thing I've done for a couple years is professional moving I did a lot of that 
And then also one time I did uh, metal roofing for a little bit as well. One winter I did three jobs, metal roofing, uh, snow plowing, and uh, professional moving. And basically you do, you know, uh, the professional moving wasn't every day of the week. So the days I wasn't moving, I was doing metal roofing. And then if a big snowstorm came in, I would drop both and go do the snow plowing. You know, because you make good money on doing that. You know, you get paid a good amount of money per hour, over 20 bucks an hour, and uh, good stuff. So anyways, that's that. Uh, so, there's some of the experience. Now I'm going to go down to the uh, practical advice in some mistakes and these types of things. So, going all the way back to the beginning, when I was lost, you know, I made a lot of mistakes. Um, and... You know, I started to learn a lot more. I learned some when I was lost, but I, you know, God showed me a lot more after I was saved. Uh, when you're lost, you know, you there's uh, pride. There's a lot of other issues that you don't want to face, don't want to admit, don't want to repent of. Harder to learn things, more stubborn. And so, you know, it can cause a lot of damage and a lot of heartache and stress when you're lost. You know, the Bible says the way of transgressors is hard. You can make it really hard on yourself. Uh, now there's another verse that talks about um, because of transgressions, many, you know, the uh, the wicked are afflicted. Something like that. Basically, they bring it on themselves because of their sin. And that was a, that was a big thing for, for myself. Is that a lot of things that happened was because of, of things that I was doing. You know, my mistakes. My sins. But anyways... You know, so when I was lost and in that state, uh, I had a lot of anger problems when I was younger, especially when I was a teenager, early 20s. I was a death metal singer. That was my therapy to get it out. But it would spill over it at work, right? Something, uh, you know, would happen. Something would be really frustrating. I get really angry, these types of things. And the problem is, you know, it's not just getting angry, losing your cool, these types of things. But even if, let's say you get angry and take your anger out on something like, you you know, you, you hit a, a rock with a stick or something. But somebody sees that, it's going to affect their perception of you. And I'm going to talk a lot about these social aspects. But that, that'll hurt you. That hurt me multiple times. Um, I've even lost a job before from that type of stuff just getting so mad and I've just left you know so a lot of things like that happen and uh, you know as I and when I got saved that was one of the biggest transformations that God did for me in my life you know is that he uh, took the anger away and you know it wasn't completely away wasn't completely taken away I can't say that we all still have the flesh but it was completely broken and immediately when I saw something happening I repent of it be convicted by the Holy Spirit and strived and pray about not doing that again and then I would grow over time sanctification and get better and better but I had you know the peace first for the, for the first time in my life and that changed a lot of things and the reason I bring up all that is because that can cause a lot of problems not only in life in general but at work you know so that's something to think about too your emotional state uh going into work so um so yeah let's talk about that some of the some of the uh practical things going to work so first of all spiritually is the most important thing you know this is primarily directed towards Christians, so that's who I'm addressing. You know, there are going to be other, some other things in here anyone could use, but I'm going to address it towards Christians. So, before you go to work, okay, this I believe after all these years and going to work, like I said, as a Christian, as, and I was not only an employee when I was lost, but I was an employee as a Christian for years, okay? And so, as a, a um, Christian in the workplace, these are some of the most important things that... I have learned and I've seen okay and you know this is these are all biblical principles as well okay so here the first thing is the mindset that you have 
even going to work, okay? And that starts at the beginning of the day before you go into work. You cannot go to work uh, all willy-nilly, like, oh, I'll just get up and, you know, get ready and go to work and then not even and just think it's a casual thing. It's not a casual thing, okay, as a Christian. It is not a casual thing. What do I mean by that? It is war. You might think I'm exaggerating, or you might say, you might be agreeing with me. Might be agreeing with me. You might know exactly what I'm talking about. It is a war. Okay? Because think about it like this. When you're saved, when you're born again, you're regenerated, you have the new man. The Bible says also you have an old man which needs to be crucified. It says, mortify the deeds of the body through the spirit abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul so there's this war between the flesh and the spirit and if that's in you and you have the holy spirit in you you don't think that there's going to naturally be a some tension between you and other people in the workplace when most likely everyone else there is lost absolutely you don't think that the devil isn't going to try to use some of the people at your work against you absolutely it's a war and maybe the reason you have a lot of problems at work and you don't get the victory and you're not getting through it you're struggling and struggling is because you're not treating it like a war okay so going to work is going to war that's the way it is. That's that's the world that we live in. And it's even way more true now today than it ever has been. Okay? So, having said that, let's get that settled. Get that settled and accept that. Go, okay? I accept it. It's a war. Okay? You got that down? Now that you got that down, how do you prepare? Well, every morning before you leave the house, I don't care if you're going to an office or working outside or a truck it doesn't matter what it is you're gonna have to deal with someone a boss a co-worker custom lost people that are customers people on the road whatever it is before you leave you need to read the Bible and you need to pray okay now you might not you might be like well I can't pray for an hour that's fine you know what's better than praying one or two hours once a week? Praying 15 minutes every single day. That's better. Okay? The consistency is what is better. That's what you need. Okay? So this is important. Before you leave the house, you got to get ready. So you got to make sure you give yourself enough time. Say, I don't have enough time. Well, you got to go get up earlier well I can't I'm tired then go to bed earlier to get up earlier you can't tell me you don't have any time I'm sure there's things that you're doing that you could shave off some activities where you're wasting time okay so open up that schedule in the morning to have some time of reading the Bible one schedule that I like is two chapters of the New Testament in the morning and five or six chapters of the Old Testament at night but you come up with whatever plan you want and have Bible reading time in the morning and you have a time of prayer before you step foot out of that house and if you don't do that and you have problems during the day and it's a struggle or you have stress then you need to think back on hey did you skip that time with God because Jesus Christ said, for without me, ye can do nothing. John 15. That, you should drill that verse into your head. For without me, you can do nothing. That's what Jesus said. Now, when you leave the house and you go to work and you try to live as a Christian in the world, in that warfare environment, without praying and reading the Bible, you're saying, no, I can do it without Jesus. I can do it without God. That's what you're saying. You may not be saying it with your mouth, but you're saying it with your actions. 
You're saying, oh, I can do it without you. I can survive out there. You can't. It's a war. It's a war. Okay? This is from experience. This is not from an ivory tower. Been there, done that. And I have made all the mistakes and all the sins. So that we can talk about this today. And hopefully help some people save from some big mistakes and heartaches and loss and stress and anxiety and all that other type of stuff. Okay? So that's the most important thing. Get that set in the morning. Read the Bible. Pray. Now, during the day, if you can, maybe if you if there's any chance that you are allowed to listen to something in a vehicle or at work with headphones while you work, bring audio Bible with you, sermons, hymns, these types of things. Anytime you get to sneak that in, get it in. At lunchtime. Let's say you heard some, you're hearing some bunch of garbage music and filthy talking. Try to get something in your ears at lunchtime. Go hide in the car, go somewhere else, get some alone time and refresh. That'll help. Utilize your time. Uh, and then of course, at the end of the day, you gotta do all your stuff, you get home, you got to, you know, eat dinner, take, go, go do errands, come home, eat dinner, wash, blah, 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 all that stuff. But after all that's done, after you put the kids to bed, whatever it is, it's time to read again. Okay? It's time to read the Bible again. Okay? And because, think about it, in the morning, you are building yourself up, preparing to go out into battle. Put on the whole armor of God. When you are coming home, what's, what has happened all day? You have been out in the world in the war. You've been hearing filthy cursing, dirty jokes. You've been hearing people act ridiculous, foolish, dealing with stressful things all day bad attitudes, all types of awful stuff. And it can mess with you in your heart and in your mind. And you got the filth of the world on you. So when you get home, what's the time to do? Washing with the water of the word. That's what the Bible's called, the water of the word. You think you can just shed that off? Ah, whatever, I'll just go to bed. No. You will not because you will wake up not feeling good and have a bad next day. You won't even be able to relax. Wash with the water of your word. The Bible says renewing. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? With the word of God. Wash with the water of the word. Read it. And then since it's nighttime, you get a little, a little bit more time, do a little bit more studying too. You come across a word you're unfamiliar with, look it up. Hey, what's that word mean? Hey, I want to know more about that verse. Let me look up some, uh, what, what some people said about it. Let me do a word study on throughout the Bible, whatever it is. Maybe read a couple chapters and then read a little bit of another book related to the Bible. But you got to renew the mind. Okay? Now, this is, I'm spending a lot of time on this because this is the most important thing. If you don't sandwich your day in the morning and at night with Bible and prayer, you're going to have a hard time. It's not going to go well for you. Now, this is no guarantee that things are just going to go smooth. There's going to be lots of problems. But you have to at least have this to be able to handle life at work in the war zone. Because if you don't, you don't stand a chance. You don't stand a chance. And so walking after the Spirit is reading the Bible, praying every day, not after the flesh. Don't feed the flesh. Feed the Spirit. Make not provision for the flesh, the Bible says. Okay? So... That's the most important thing 
get that set every day. Also, two, driving to work or on the way home, make sure you got some uh, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Some godly music also helps. Don't underestimate the power of that. You got bad songs you heard during the day. Even maybe you got one stuck in your head from going in the store. The way to push that out is with good music. Okay? So, those are your tools, your weapons, your armor to go through the day. And then obviously, anytime throughout the day, you can pray. Pray for help. To doing particularly, to, you got a problem, pray about it. There's an issue at work, pray about it. Something happens, something that you need to do or you need to talk to somebody. Something that, whatever it is that comes up at work, just pray about it. It doesn't matter. It could take 15 seconds. Pray. God's, the, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. You have to ask. Maybe something that you, you ask for a while, you got to keep asking, keep asking, keep asking. It might not come right away. Ask, seek, and knock. And don't give up. All right, so that's pretty much the spiritual uh, foundation for going to work, surviving in that environment, these types of things. Now we're going to jump to some practical stuff. And uh, hopefully no one gets upset. You shouldn't get offended. You shouldn't get upset. If there's anything that I say that maybe you've been doing that you shouldn't have been doing, don't get upset with me. I'm just trying to help you. And then also, if you if you, there's any married couples that are watching, don't go to your spouse and say, I told you so. You should have listened to me. Like, if I say something that they've already told you, don't go to them and say, ah, he said what I said. Don't do that. If you want someone to listen and change, and maybe they're actually going to listen, then just let them listen. Okay? So... When it comes to the practical advice, some of the stuff you might think is a no-brainer, it's actually not. Because nowadays especially, there is a huge problem with employees. Uh, people are having, I've heard it so many stories from so many different industries. It doesn't matter what type of industry it is, people are having trouble finding good workers. Okay, And by good, I don't even mean really good, just basic. Okay. Also, this time of year and also coming up into the next year, there's going to be a lot of layoffs. There already has been and there's going to be a lot of layoffs. So this may help you to avoid being laid off. So back to what I said before, people are having trouble finding good employees. What do I mean by that? Well, they can't even find people to show up. Just even to show up or they show up and then a couple days later, they're gone. They quit. Okay. So the bare bones basic level is showing up every day showing up on time and not being late now this all this stuff that I'm telling you is not just practical advice to be successful at work be treated well by by the company maybe get a raise respect these types of things it is also you must see part of your testimony okay a huge portion of your life is at work. It is a part of your testimony, how you act at work. It won't probably won't take long if you admit some things, you talk to people, it shouldn't take long for people to figure out you're a Christian. And the moment that they find out you're a Christian, they will watch you like a hawk every single day. Sometimes for years, waiting for you to make a mistake. So they can go, ha, look at the Christian. He sinned. <laughs> Sinner, you're just like us. I'm not exaggerating. That is exactly how it works. And so, be aware, not just for yourself, your testimony, but think about you are a testimony for God. You are an ambassador for Christ, representing Christ. We are living epistles, known and read of all men. They're reading you. 
watching you. So if we want to glorify God in everything we do, then let's think about everything that we do. Okay? So having said all that, showing up every day, showing up on time, not being late. If you are going to be late, let them know, communicate beforehand, send a text to call, hey, I'm going to be late. Don't just show up late and not say anything. And whatever you do, under no circumstances do you ever no call, no show. A lot of places, that is, you're fired, you're done. Okay? Basic stuff, right? So, just doing that, if you show up on time and you just show up every day, just showing up puts you ahead of a lot of people today. Sad. It's sad. It shouldn't be that way. It's sad. But that's reality. That is reality. And that makes you valuable on a base level. Okay? Now, having said that, the most important thing at work, after you got all that stuff settled, showing up every day, you show up on time, you do all those things you're supposed to do. The other most important thing at work you have to understand is there are going to be, as far as spiritual things go, there's going to be times where you have open doors of opportunity. You should pray for that. Pray for doors of opportunity to witness to people, to have a conversation. Great. You should pray about that. But you can't force that to happen. And that's not your first priority actually at work. Your first priority at work is to do your job and to do it the best that you can. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, whatever, what sort of the hand find it to do, do it with thy might. Do it the best that you can. And there's no excuse why you shouldn't be the best at what you do at your, your work. You put in the full effort. Um, so you can't, some people feel bad oh, if I'm not witnessing to every person all the time I'm doing something bad no that's not true that's not your primary responsibility you had you make an agreement with an employer to do a certain job do it every day and they agree to pay you a certain amount of money for your work in return now the other dynamics there social dynamics co-workers managers bosses supervisors you may be able to have conversations with them. Sometimes you won't. Maybe they're so busy they can't at work. Then you're going to make it kind of awkward. They're trying to do their job and you're sitting here trying to talk about this, that, and the other thing. You can't always just force that to happen. And in fact, sometimes you're going to make people mad because you're not doing your job. Okay? So think about that. Let that go. Get that idea out of your head that it's not every single moment of every day I have to be witnessing and talking to people about the gospel. Pray about the opportunity. I have been able to, by the grace of God, I've been able to witness to many people at different jobs. But it's all in God's timing. You know? And here's the most important thing before any of that. Okay, back to the most important thing. The most important thing is, after showing up every day, is working hard. These are things, there's things that are outside of your control, how other people behave, other weird variables, right? But this one thing you have control of, you have control over how hard you work, right? And I don't mean you're killing yourself, I mean you are doing your job you're doing your job well and you consistently do it well. And you should do it the best that you can, uh, better than anyone else. Absolutely. And that's a reflection of God and what God has done in your life and your heart. Because you value it, you do it as unto the Lord. Even if no one is watching you, what you're doing, you're doing it the right way. You're not cutting corners. You're not... Uh, you know, no one, no one will want to listen to you about the gospel if they don't respect you. And some people, you might do the best you can and these people still won't respect you. We'll talk about that after. But at the base level, don't give them an excuse by being, by cutting corners, 
by being lazy, by not putting in enough effort that you don't care, then the, the, the respect goes out the window. You're not going to get respect from your boss, your employer especially, managers, boss, the owners, and not from the co-workers. No one. Especially when you, if you first start a job, especially the first impression you make at a company the first couple weeks to a month. Don't even worry about anything else except showing up every day and doing the best that you can, doing what you're supposed to do, not being lazy, doing the best you can. You make that good impression, then maybe people will chill a little bit and want to talk to you about other things. But no one likes having someone lazy around that's dragging everyone else down and not doing the best they can, they're not working hard. And then also, so, so, so just working hard, doing the best that you can, caring about what you actually do, that's a huge thing that goes a long way as far as establishing respect. And another thing, the next thing that is a huge thing, huge factor is the tongue. That's right, the tongue. Now, this is the one passage I know I'm going to read. Um, and this passage, this chapter, you should read a lot. Read it over and over again. In fact, just to make sure that you get it down, maybe you should read it every day for a couple weeks till you get this down and pray about this every day. Because the tongue will get you into a lot of trouble. It can get you into a lot of trouble. Very easily it can get you in a lot of trouble. By things that you say to coworkers, to managers, to owners, whoever it is, the tongue can get you in trouble in, in many different types of situations. And sometimes you might not even realize you are building your own gallows when you're talking to someone. So, I'm just going to read this and we'll talk about it. James chapter 3, verse 2. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Maybe you should uh, pray that. That's a good prayer to pray. To say, you know, put a bit in my mouth so that I obey. Behold, all the ships which, are, uh, which though they be so great, are driven of fierce winds, yet are they dri uh, turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. More than one time, the Bible refers to the tongue as a fire. And the tongue, verse 6, and the tongue is a fire. Okay? Really listen to this verse. The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among the, our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire of hell. Wow. That's some pretty strong language talking about the tongue. For every kind of beasts and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea, is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Okay? So, it says the tongue can no man tame. Do you know what that means? Going back to what I said earlier, about John chapter 15. 
Jesus said, for without me, you can do nothing. Okay? So, let me just actually turn that real quick. Just to, uh, I just want to reinforce that real quick. Uh, yeah, John 15, 5. I am the, Jesus said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. John 15, 5. What does it say here? But the tongue can no man tame. You, naturally speaking, do not have the power to tame your own tongue. What did it say? It's an unruly evil, full of deadly poison, set on fire of hell, a world of iniquity. And you think you can just willy-nilly walk into work and that your tongue won't get you into a lot of trouble. It will. Your mouth will ruin you. It can't. If you don't listen to what the book is saying. And so it says the tongue can no man tame. But you know who can tame? The tongue is God. Okay? The Holy Spirit can tame your tongue. That's it. Only God can, not you. And so once you know that, you accept that, and you see, whoa, this is a, think about it. It's like, I got, I'm going to work, and you got a wild animal attached to you, that's your tongue, and you bring the animal to work, and then you can't tame the animal. It's running around, biting people, you know, going to the bathroom on the boss's desk, tipping over shelves, knocking everything over like a bull in a china shop, just causing disaster, right? Because you thought you could keep it under control, but you can't. That's called pride, by the way. Stubbornness. But, if you just simply read the Bible, pray, and say, God, please, Keep my tongue today. Tame my tongue. Keep it under control. Read the book of Proverbs, right? It says, even someone who keeps their mouth shut is counted as wise. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. A fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. The more you talk, the more trouble you can be getting yourself into. Because, why? The tongue is unruly. Wild. And if you underestimate it, you're potentially going to get in a lot of trouble. So, you have to pray about the tongue before you go to work. At work, too. Because there's going to be some things, a lot of times, people are going to do and say things. Your boss, your manager, the owner, co-workers, and it's going to make you mad. Another a chapter to read a lot too is 1 Corinthians 13 char about charity. It says that charity is not puffed up. It's not easily provoked. Are you easily provoked at work? If you're easily provoked, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You're going to be feeling it in your heart. It's going to spill out of your mouth. And once it's out, you can't take it back. You said something to the coworker. You said something to the manager. You said something to the boss. Have I done that? Oh, you bet I have. Yes, I have. Have I messed things up with my mouth at work? Yes, I have. Sadly, I have. So I'm here to warn you, not just based on hearsay, theory, but praxis, practice, experience. Okay? So the tongue, pray about that. And so, um, that's a huge thing. Another huge thing is the tongue. Pray about that and some practical advice about that. Here's a few things, okay? It's pretty simple, but think about it, okay? 
Don't ever talk about your boss or your manager to your coworkers negatively, ever. Okay? I'm not going to repeat any of these. Okay? Just let it sink in. Uh, don't talk about other coworkers to other coworkers negatively, ever. Okay? So those are two big things that will save you huge amount of trouble. And it doesn't matter how awful of a coworker you think someone is, don't ever tell another coworker. It doesn't matter how bad you think the manager is or the boss is, don't ever tell another worker. Ever. And you're a Christian, we're supposed to love everyone, hey, even our enemies. But that, that doesn't mean we need to think of this is, this is reality. We don't need to think of people here as friends that we can trust because you can't trust anyone at work. That's just reality, okay? This is reality. They will turn on you in two seconds flat. No one is your friend. It's a job. And they will sell you out in two seconds flat and uh, to your employer, whatever it is stab you in the back, drop you like nothing. Even people that you've been friendly with at work for a, a long time, it does not matter. That brings me to another thing, which is how the tongue can get you in trouble, is be very careful about how much information you tell other people, especially coworkers. You don't need to tell them every single detail of your personal life. Be very careful about that. Because again, they could use it against you. They could twist things. You never know what it is, what could happen. And so just be very careful about that. Think about things before you say them. Pray about it. Don't be provoked into blur blurting things out. And that's the other, another important reason why you need to pray every day is because if you are at work, right, and people are really frustrated and they made you mad and you didn't say anything, but it's in your heart, you go home and you hold that in, you don't pray about it, guess what? It's still there the next day. And the next day, and the next day, and the next day. You know what's going to happen? It's going to come pouring out one day. Because someone is going to be building up for a while. And someone is going to trigger you. They're going to set you off. And it's going to come shooting out. And you're going to say something that's not nice to these people. And guess what? You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to hurt yourself. And so to prevent that from happening, maybe something happened at work. It was frustrating. You couldn't say anything. You go home. You don't feel good about it. Guess what? Time to pray. And, you know, in the Lord's Prayer, it says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us our sins as we forgive others. And you have to. You have to give it up unto God. Say, God, please help me to forgive those who have sinned against me that I do not have bitterness or anger in my heart. The Bible says, anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Everybody gets angry sometimes. But it's supposed to pass through you. Bible says, be ye angry and sin not. Don't let it, the, the sun don't go down on your wrath, but forgive. Now, forgiveness doesn't mean you need to go tell someone, I forgive you, who especially hasn't even said sorry to you. In fact, that's, that's in really indulging them and telling them to continue doing bad things to you. It means in the heart. It means you're giving it up to God. You don't, you're not going to stay mad at them. You're not bitter at them. You don't want to take revenge on them. You let all that go. Give it up to God. But you need to, to pray that. To pour out your heart. Okay? If you've had a rough day, pour out your heart unto God. 
Tell him. Tell God about all that stuff. You're upset? Tell God. Get it all out. Because if you don't get it out to God, it's going to come out at work in the wrong way. It's going to happen. Now, just something to piggyback on that, especially when it comes to men, but this could apply to anyone, uh, is exercise. It's another practical tip. The best de-stressor in the world is exercise. Now, if you can't go to the gym, you can't do any of that stuff, bare minimum, walk, run, do stuff, body, body weight exercises. If you don't have any equipment, but you need to have exercise, especially if you're at a desk job. If you're sitting down all day, then it's double the importance that you move your body. You have to, because it will kill you. And it will increase your stress through the roof if you don't move your body. A lot of stuff, honestly, you're feeling stress and anxiety is because you're not moving. You move your body, you exercise, get a little, sweat some stuff out a little bit, you be blown away sometimes how much better you feel. Okay? Now, sometimes men do have more, to, we have testosterone, okay? Naturally, we can have more aggression. Okay, so get it out by exercise. Get a punching bag. And beat the tar out of that thing. Get it all out. Because you don't want to take it out on anybody else. Because it will come out. Okay? So don't forget to exercise. It's a more important practical tip. And um, kind of something that ties together with that as well is be careful of eating too much junk food too because that can accumulate the toxins. It can add to stress. It can contribute to negative feelings, anxiety, stress, depression, those types of things. That's from combining all the stress and the bad things that happen at work with these other factors that you can control, you're just making it worse with diet and exercise. Okay, so make sure you eliminate as many factors as you can control, eliminate them, so that the only things that are left are things that are outside of your control. You give it up to God. That's what you're trying to do here. Okay. And uh, so another thing is, as far as like not having strife at work, problems, fighting, these types of things. Well, the Bible says, only by pride comes contention. Okay? Most fights are due to pride or envy. People are jealous. A lot of times that happens. And that is that is a big thing to talk about as well. Is that let's say you do everything you're supposed to do. Okay? And you show up every day. You show up on time. You do what you're supposed to do. You work hard. All that stuff. There's going to be other people, especially sometimes lazy people who don't want to work hard, co-workers, and they will be jealous of you. Straight up. That's what they will be. Now, and people will want to be uh, attack you just because you're a Christian too. That's a fact. It's a fact. I've experienced it firsthand. Okay? So what you're doing though... When you show up every day, you show up on time, you work hard, you do everything you're supposed to do, you're eliminating any vectors of attack that people can have something to say against you. Like a coworker could say against you to your boss, oh, there, this person does this, blah, blah, blah. Or to say to another coworker, oh, do you see this person? They, they showed up late again, blah, 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 blah. And they're talking trash. If you do all those things you're supposed to do, they can't say that unless they completely lie. So now... If they are so over the top jealous or whatever it is, they don't like you. They have to go way out of their way, above and beyond, to lie about you and make something up to try to make you look bad. And there's a few things you can do about that. Number one, you maintain all those things that I said you do every day. Number two, you, well, the number one thing is you pray about it. Number two is what I just said. But number one is you make sure you're praying about that and pray specifically for that person you know that's a problem. Or persons, whatever it is. And the other thing is, 
that you have control over is how you react. Don't ever react with anger. Don't cause a confrontation if you don't have to. But if you have to, maybe you have to talk to someone. Most of the time, it has to be resolved by going to the authority, to a manager, to a boss. You might have to talk to them. See if you can just have a small talk with them and say, hey, this person, I don't know what their deal is. They got a problem with me. I'm not trying to have a, a dispute with them. I don't have a problem with them. I just don't want anything uh, to escalate or anything to happen. Just let them know. And that's usually the, the best thing to do and whatever. But maybe sometime you might have to talk to someone. And if you do, or there's some type of confrontation, they try to confront you, cause a confrontation. The most important thing in that uh, situation is your reaction. Not reacting emotionally, not getting angry, not getting upset, not raising your voice. The Bible says the soft answer turneth away wrath. Staying as calm as possible. Make sure you're listening. Try to hear their perspective. They're upset about something. Listen to them. And maybe sometimes someone that's attacking you, maybe they're just taking out their frustrations on you because they have a really, maybe they've had a bad life. Maybe they've, be, they've experienced a horrible life of abuse. Maybe they're just frustrated at how their life is going and they're taking it out on you. You never know what someone's going through. That's why it's important to pray, not only for your day every day, but make sure you're praying for everyone at work. Pray for all your coworkers, all your managers and supervisors and the owners every single day. Pray for all of them. And especially be praying for the ones that got problems. If they have a problem with you, pray about it. And pray that either it gets resolved or that they're gone. And that's what you have to pray. Either it gets resolved and they stop acting like that or that God gets them out of that company. Or maybe you have to leave because sometimes the situation is they won't stop acting like that. The boss doesn't care. The manager doesn't care. They're not going to do anything about it. You tried everything you can. It can't work out. Then maybe God's shutting that door. You got to get out. And if you do, don't worry about it. Give it up to God. Pray about it. You got to leave. Because you do not want to hurt yourself. Do not live under this delusion that you owe any company anything. You do not you do not have absolute loyalty to any employer. None in this world. You have uh, your obligation is to God and your family first. And if they start getting in the way and causing problems and making your life uh, awful, then you need to find something else. Don't hurt yourself and cause the stress and anxiety, which is going to translate over to your family and whatever it is, just to maintain some sort of weird, fake loyalty to a company. You need to do what is best if you care about your family, you love your family, you love your spouse and your kids and all this other stuff or whatever is, maybe you're single, you're preparing for the future, you still got to take care of yourself and may have the ability to help other people as well. It's the most important thing. It's not, uh, you need to put that first and God first, not this uh, company. Okay, so don't let that, don't get trapped somewhere. You don't have to stay there. I've gone through that myself. I have stayed at places too long when I should have left. And after I left, I thought back and I was like, I should have left. I can't believe I didn't leave earlier. Why didn't I leave earlier? Because I go to some other company and it's a relief. And I'm like, man, I can't. Why didn't I do this earlier? Don't do that to yourself. You got to leave. Okay. So uh, that takes care of a lot of problems and issues at, works, um, at work when it comes to disputes, problems with other people, these types of things.
but a lot of it has to do with your reaction. Let's say you do everything you're supposed to do, but people still don't like you. They make fun of you because you're a Christian, whatever it is. You can't care. You have to be dead to it. It's all about your reaction. People, there are a lot of people out there that like to see you get upset, that want to get a rise out of you, want to see you be shocked. They want to say shocking things. So you go, oh man, I can't believe you said that. And, and say something. You have to be dead to all of it. Nothing. You don't feed into it. People can be saying all kinds of filthy things and dirty jokes. Trust me, I've been on. The, I've been in the trades, and that's what they talk like. But you don't participate in the dirty jokes, and they're saying stuff, and you just doesn't affect you, and you move on to the next thing. But don't be, but also don't go too far in the other direction where you're not just walking around too serious all the time. You can't smile. You can't joke around a little bit. So, you know, when, when things are clean, you know, not dirty jokes, some things that are clean, you can joke around a little bit, then take the opportunity to do that. Show that you're not self-righteous, Pharisee. That you can't have some fun. You are, you know, you are, ha you are happy. You have joy. You're in a good mood. You're boosting morale. Nothing worse than someone who has a negative attitude at work, who lowers everyone's morale and complaining. That's the other thing not to do as well. Is complain. Don't ever complain, ever at work. Never. Doesn't matter. And I know sometimes it'd be really hard. And it's okay to talk about sometimes the problems that happen. But be very careful. Again, just complaining. Because maybe someone might not say something to someone else or the boss about you saying that. But maybe you're just dragging other people down. You should be a positive influence that's lifting everyone up when you get at work. You should be motivating to other people. Say, all right, come on, let's do, let's go, let's do this. You shouldn't be dragging other people down. That's another thing that's part of your testimony. Uh, because you've probably been around people that are like that. They're complaining, they're defeatist, they're negative. It's awful. I can't stand being around it. And so... You have to fight through that. And that's why you get to pray every day about that. And don't and don't ever feed into it. Someone starts acting like that, don't feed into it. You ignore it, change the subject. You have the right attitude and say, I'm not playing, I'm not feeding into that game. That's not how uh, I act. That's not how we act. That's another important thing as well. Uh, okay. So that's an issue about a lot of things with strife and problems and fights. Um, but it's one more thing though about leaving a company. Well, first of all, let me talk about this. Because it's kind of tied together with if you have to leave a company or not. And it's about um, how much money you make. Okay. Now... Might be a, a touchy subject to somebody, but uh, there's a lot of things that are just objective truths, just not even up for debate, okay? In, I'm speaking from an American perspective. I'm in America, but this is true in a lot of places. Uh, it used to be that um, a one person, a man, could have an income and it would pay for everything. Not even a crazy job. And it would pay for a house and, and a car and the whole family and all these other types of things. The wife didn't have to work. Well, we know things happened with the currency and the, and the economy and all these things happened. The value of the dollar going down. And so a lot of households became two income households. The, every, the cost of everything went up. And so they have to have two incomes to survive. That's not God's uh, primary plan. The plan is, it's supposed to be the man works and the wife stays at home, takes care of the kids. That's the plan. Keepers at home, the Bible says about the woman. The man's supposed to go out and work. 
Well, it became increasingly harder and harder to do that. That's all by design. But, you know, I believe that there is still the possibility that men can still do that. They have to be a little more creative. They have to work hard. But one thing that I can tell you is that, uh, and this isn't just one person, there's many different person, people, that I've seen this happen to. And they just get too complacent. Not, not just uh, complacent, there's also issues with uh, how they view themselves, view themselves negatively, they limit themselves, underestimate themselves, a lot of things like that. And so whatever amount that they're getting paid, they just kind of accept it. They don't fight to, to get paid more. Well, it's not a bad thing, especially in this modern day times, to try to make as much money as you can for your family. I'm not talking about getting rich. I'm talking about being able to survive in the modern day times, okay? And it is difficult in modern day times, but it's especially very difficult if you're trying to do it off one income. But, you know, there's various things you can do, but just staying within the frame of being an employee at a company. Let me tell you one thing that's a huge, um, I think a help, and especially from being in a perspective of where I, I've been a bit as a business owner myself it's about getting a raise okay now let me tell you what's better than going to your boss and saying you know I you know I've been here for this amount of time um, would it be possible for me to get a raise or I think I should get a raise because I've been here this time would it, anything like that talk to somebody can I talk about getting a raise increase in pay anything like that I think you should cut out anything that is remotely close to that type of language and this is what you do and there's a couple different things connected to this you go you ask if you could talk to your boss to set up a meeting you have the meeting and this is what you ask them you say, what can I do to be more valuable to this company? What can I do to make myself worth more money to this company, to make this company more money? This is infinitely better than asking, can I have a raise? I think I should get a raise. I've been here for so long, blah, 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 blah. Because how long you've been at a place doesn't matter. It's all about the value that you create, okay? And values are dependent on skills. So then to extend that a little bit, to detail that, you say, you know, is there anything I can do? Is there, are there any more skills that I can learn? Is there any courses or, uh, that I could take, any, any type of education, any type of ways that I could further my education that would be valuable to the company? to you uh, to be worth more and more valuable to the company is there any of those things that I can do and then maybe they could tell you that there is and if there is anything that you can do in terms of furthering education skills courses you can take certifications that you can get max out your certifications everything you can if this is what you've chosen this is what you want to do with your life, your job, your career, max out your certifications and education, these types of things to further yourself as much as you can. Okay? And uh, so there's that. Now, if they say no, not really, that I don't I can't think of anything, then maybe it's time to find a new job. And start searching somewhere else and see if you can do the same thing but get paid more money because it's not worth it to kill yourself at a job and not getting paid what you're worth okay 
and worth meaning your value in the marketplace, okay? We're not talking in spiritual terms here. We're just talking about in a capitalist society, okay? That's the way to approach that. And this is something you really got to think. You got to, you have to shake things up. You got to get out of your comfort zone. Do it for your family. Do it for God. Do it for yourself to get out of there. Because, hey, let's, say, let's pretend you don't even have any family. Well, the Bible says you should work to be able to have, to be able to give those that are in need. You say, oh, someone, you know, someone, uh, your neighbor down the street, they just, uh, their car was totaled or something. Man, I wish I could help them out. Well, you can't. Well, if you, you know, increased your pay at work, maybe you would have a little bit more money to be able to help your neighbor. Simple stuff like that. Practical stuff. We're not talking about, oh, I need to make a million dollars. We're not talking about that. We're talking about how expensive it is to live. And that the more you can make, the more you have the ability to provide as a man for your family. Okay? Now, some of you maybe think, maybe I do. you do want to start a business. Well, there's, you know, you should start educating yourself, reading books, audiobooks, these types of things, learning different skills, sales, marketing, business, those types of things. I talk about all those things in my other video, um, how I started a business, a 2K a week business out of the back of my car. Okay, so go watch that video for all that stuff. But for everyone else that is going to stay an employee, that's what you should be doing. Asking what you can do and specifically saying, no, don't just randomly go out, I'm going to learn this and learn that. Ask them what's valuable to them. Because they might tell you, hey, if you go out and you get this certification, I'm going to give you, I'll give you a raise. You go and learn how to do this. You go get this license, this certification, whatever it is, you, you learn this skill, I'll pay you this much more money. Just, just ask them. That's what you have to do. That's what you should be doing. Now on top of that, if you're on one income as a man and maybe things are tight, you got to be thinking about side hustles too. A lot of people sell things on the side, on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and these types of things. But a huge thing is you go on Craigslist and you go to the section called gigs and there are, it's filled with jobs in your area that are one, two day jobs, jobs you can do on the weekend and you can make some extra cash, cash jobs. One of the best things you uh, that you can do that pops up all around the country are moving jobs. They have them where some guy has a tractor trailer and he's moving someone across the country. He puts an ad on the gig section saying, hey, I'm gonna be here on this, you know, tomorrow. You contact them, say, meet, they, they'll tell you the address, you go meet them there. And all you do is unload furniture from the tractor trailer into someone's house or apartment building and they'll pay you cash at the end. Simple stuff like that moving jobs on the weekend other random yard jobs or, or maybe you have some skills you could use you can build some stuff do some handyman work whatever it is you go to the gig section there and you can do some side work but that's really important when it comes to uh, taking care of your family so um that covers a lot of stuff. Um, I think we're pretty much done. I'm just making sure I'm not forgetting anything. Um, that's quite a bit, though, to to chew on. I think. Um, and this is I'm just riffing off the top of my head. So let's summarize then. Um, as I said at the beginning. The foundation to all this surviving as a Christian in the, in the world today, in, in the workplace, is praying and reading the Bible every day, especially in the morning before you leave, but also when you come home, 
refreshing, renewing your mind, washing in the water of the Word, and doing that every day, staying consistent with it. And then praying about the specific things I talked about. Praying about your tongue. Praying about your reaction to people. These types of things. Um, focus on those types of things. If you make a mistake, if you mess up, don't beat yourself up too much about it. Just repent of it. Confess it. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confess your sin to God. Repent of it. And, and move on. Try again the next day. His compassions, they fail not. They are new every morning. You wake up the next day, clean slate. Let's try it again. Striving against sin. Striving to be a good testimony. And then, oh yeah, so then the one last thing as far as like, uh, how you know, how do you open up doors of opportunity for witnessing to people? Well, you know, like I said, pray about for doors of opportunity. Don't force it open and badger people. But if opportunity arises, some various things that have helped me in the past to just open conversations would be honestly conspiracy stuff. A lot of people I've talked to just those types of topics, you know, come up. Just talking about random conspiracy stuff. And, uh, and then you start talking about that for a while. Eventually, it's going to point towards, you know, the spiritual nature behind it all. And that points towards the Bible. You talk, start talking about the Bible. An opportunity to tell your testimony. Pretty, you know, pretty close, uh, pretty soon from working at somewhere. Pretty early on, people are going to ask you, drink, you smoke, you do this, you do that. No, I don't, no, I don't. Why? Well, I'm a Christian. Okay, oh, okay, you're one of those. Blah, 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 fine. Again, they, uh, they roll their eyes at you. They make fun of you. Doesn't matter. You're dead. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And also, God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I into the world. I'm crucified to it. I'm dead to it, and the world dead to me. They think it's strange you not run not to the same excess of riot with them. Speaking evil of you. Doesn't matter. Okay, yeah, I, yeah, whatever. I'm the I'm the cr cringe Christian. I don't do this. I don't do that. Who cares? Stay consistent. St stick to your principles. Stick to your integrity. You might find out the same people that act like that one day, a few months go by, they might start getting sick of that lifestyle, and they might actually open up and start talking to you. Uh, but you know. Just uh, if they ask, if someone asks more about it, maybe you can have an opportunity to tell your testimony. That's one of the best things you can do is just tell your testimony about how God saved you. That opens up the door to talk about all these other things. And don't worry about saying everything perfect. Don't worry about memorizing every single thing and doctrine in the Bible. Just say, hey, this is what Jesus did. God saved my soul. Jesus is, is the way. That's what he did for me. He can do it for you too. Boom. That's it. That's it. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't wring your hands about it. Pray about it. Leave it up to God. Be a witness. And then back up the witness. And then remember too, you if you do have an opportunity, you are able to tell someone your testimony. You are able to talk, about, uh, talk with them about the gospel, the truth of the Bible, all this stuff. Make sure... That you remember that, okay, you talk with them about that. But after that, they're going to be watching you. And a month later, they're going to go, hey, man, they talked to me about all this stuff about Jesus changing them. But look what they're doing now. Remember that. Because they will think that. Okay, so, but you have the tools to do what you need to do. You have the weapons, the armor for victory. Submit yourselves therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Put on the whole armor of God going into work every single day. Work hard. Do a good job. All those other practical tips. Stay out of uh, trouble. Watch your mouth. Pray about it. James chapter 3. 
1 Corinthians 13. And don't worry. Hebrews chapter 11, faith. Read that too. That's another good one. Look at all the things they did by faith. Sometimes you might have a, to leave a job by faith. Sometimes you might have to learn new skills by faith. Go to another place by faith. Walk by faith, not by sight. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it. I'm sure there's some things that I forgot, but I think that's quite a bit. I hope that will help um, be, be a blessing to everyone in uh, the workplace. And so um, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you. If you have any questions, send me an email, treadingserpents.hotmail.com. If you, if you need have any questions about maybe something going on at your job, um, and if you need any recommendations for maybe books about business or something like that, I can help you out with that. Other than that, please like, share, subscribe, and check the links down below to subscribe to alternative platforms, please, especially the Telegram feed, because in the Telegram feed, that's where you'll find everything. Any links, messages, news, all kinds of stuff, all goes in the Telegram, okay? Thank you for all your prayers and support and everything else. God bless you. Have a good day.